Hello, it's Ben with the DIY Homefront, and I'm standing in front of my bicycle, which is on a brand new bicycle stand. And if you're curious about that, I've got another video where I show installing it. But to the bike, I've got to do some repair work. I've got to work on the rear sprocket. So if you're curious about bicycle repair, let's get into it. Well, the first thing I need to do if I'm going to replace that sprocket is remove the rear wheel. Well, this bike has quick release wheels, which means you don't even need any tools to remove it. You just flip this lever and then unscrew it a little bit. And you can see there's no way the tire is going to get past the brake. So we're going to have to release the tension on the brake calipers. And I'll do that by squeezing the calipers together and releasing the cable from its housing. Your bike, you might have to undo a nut to release the cable. But either way, once you do that, the calipers will spread and you can pull the tire off. And now all I need to do is just remove the derailleur out of the way. And it should come right down. And this is what we're going to take off. And unfortunately, it takes a specialized tool. So I ordered one and we'll also replace this broken chain guard. Well, the only way we're going to be able to get that specialized tool onto the sprocket is to remove the quick release assembly that attaches the wheel to the bike. And we'll also have to remove this outermost nut on this side of the wheel hub. There we go, it fits in. The chain should turn it this way, which means we're gonna have to turn the tool in the opposite direction to get it loose. And they do it that way so that as you pedal the bike and the wheel spins, it actually tightens up that sprocket, which means it is going to be difficult to undo it. I have got my longest socket wrench out and I'm using all of my body weight trying to get this thing to break free. And I got something to give. It turned a little bit, but it just doesn't feel quite right. So I took a closer look at the inside of the hub and everything seemed right. And I decided maybe I should have used some BP Rust Buster to help free things up. So I sprayed it down really good with BP Rust Buster. And then I decided while I was letting that soak in, I would take a look at the replacement sprocket. And as I take the sprocket out of the bubble wrap, I'm just trying to rethink all the steps I've gone through. And am I doing anything wrong? I've got that specialized tool, but it doesn't seem to be gripping very well. What else could possibly be going wrong here? Is it seized? Are the threads fused? I'm also wondering, am I turning it the right direction? You know, did I, did I do anything wrong? And I come to the conclusion that I was doing everything right. So in a perfect world, I used the tool and the sprocket came off and I put this new sprocket on and I assembled the bike and we were done in five minutes and everything was perfect. But we live in Ben's world and Ben's world does not work that way. So if you want to see how things go on the DIY home front and in Ben's world, get a drink and sit back because I've got another six hours to go. That will probably only be about another five or 10 minutes for you, but let's get into it. Looks like it's just stripping on these, isn't it? Well, I know this sprocket's going to be going in the trash once I get it off because it's wore out. So I'm going to use these special pliers that are designed to remove clips and maybe I can get the cover that's over the bearings off. Then I can pull the whole assembly, at least the part that the chain goes around off and see where I can get from there. But the only thing I've managed to do is just bend the tips of these pliers. I wonder if I hit this with a hammer and fan it out some if it would grab. So I hit my brand new useless specialized tool with the hammer a couple times. I put it into a little bit of an oval. Just maybe some of the teeth will engage and I'll be able to get the sprocket off. Oh man, you were starting, you were starting, that's what you were starting to do. Well, this went on for about another 20 minutes. I'd pull the tool out and beat it with the hammer some more, put it in there. It felt like it might be turning. I got my hopes up and then I actually put a zip tie on one of the spokes to, so I could look and see if it was actually moving yeah, and it wasn't. Oh, yeah. So I went to the computer and looked online to see if I could find any helpful hints. 
So a couple more hours have gone by and I've tried a few things and I just want to catch you up to where we're at. So I think part of my problem is I bought a pretty cheap one of these. I should have bought a more expensive one that was built better. These aren't raised up enough. They kept stripping out on the inside. So then I took a sledgehammer and this and I started beating these And what should happen is that this part should unscrew and leave the back part on the wheel. Well, for 27 minutes, I beat on that sprocket trying to get that ring off and it would not come. So I'm giving up and going to plan C. Well, I probably could have ordered a better quality specialized tool to take the, the sprocket off, but I didn't want to wait two or three days for it to come in. So I very carefully used an angle grinder. Well, there is no script for my DIY home front channel. It's just me. And this is how things go a lot of the times. You just get through it. Well, now that we've got that last piece ground off, I can remove all these chain rings. I finally have access to the piece of metal that was holding the bearings in place. And you can see that grinder cut it into several different pieces. Well, if you're wondering why I went this direction with the grinder and taking the chain rings off, is I'm hoping to be able to get all this removed so I actually have the piece of metal that's screwed to the hub. And maybe I can get a channel lock pliers or something on there and I can get that piece off once I have the ability to put some kind of tool on it. I'm thinking I might be able to use a screwdriver or some kind of flat piece of metal and put it in the notches that I've created and turn it off. But to do that, I'm going to have to remove the center hub from the wheel. And the only thing you really need to be careful about is making sure you capture all the ball bearings that might want to fall out. We're going to need to repack these hubs with grease and insert the bearings before this wheel ends back up on the bike. All right, my next plan of attack is to take my grinder and grind away some of this sprocket so that way I can put a large screwdriver in there and use it as a pry bar. Well, now that I've got all my cuts made, that screwdriver fits in there just fine. Hopefully this will give me the right leverage I need to get this piece off. Man, this thing is turning out to be a real headache. You know, I know I've had the bike for about 10 years and I realize the way it's designed, whenever you're pedaling, you're putting tension on this or making it tighter. But this was really on there. Doesn't seem like that much of a big deal once you get it off. Well, hopefully things will speed up and we can get this bike together now. First things first, I'm gonna have to go back and get everything really clean because I got a lot of metal shavings everywhere from using the grinder on these components. I'll even pull off these dust covers so that I can get way down inside where the bearings run. And I'll do this on both sides of the wheel, making sure I get all the old grease and dirt out of the way. The new chain guard just clips onto the hub. I think the old one broke just because the plastic was old. Well, I'm going to fill this hub up with this special grease made for bikes before I push the bearings into place. It's called Phil's Waterproof Grease for Bicycles. Pretty self-explanatory, I think. And once you got the wheel hub full of grease, it's easy enough just to take the ball bearings one at a time and then push them into the side. Eventually you'll get all the bearings in there and then you can put the axle back in. Well, I go pretty liberal with the grease when I'm doing this. I figure it's better to have too much grease and have to wipe off the excess than it would be to have too little grease for your ball bearings to roll on. And when it comes time to put the axle in, you need to be really careful that you don't knock any of the ball bearings out of place. Now I'll go ahead and flip this over and we'll get the other side done. I'll put plenty of grease where the ball bearings go, but this time I think I'll leave the dust cover off to make it easier. It also makes it a little bit easier to get all these ball bearings in place. 
It's okay if the ball bearings aren't evenly spaced around, but the next thing to do is to get the dust cover on. This screws down onto the axle and the ball bearings will roll up against it. And when you put this on the axle and screw it into place, it will cause those ball bearings to get spaced out properly like they're supposed to. So like I said, you don't really have to worry about trying to line anything up. This piece will take care of that for you. Well now I'm going to go ahead and wipe away any of the excess grease because it's just going to be a dirt magnet. Well there's only a few more steps we need to do before I can put the sprocket back on. I'm going to start by putting a spacer on this side and then there's another lock nut that goes on. And this is to create the gap where the sprocket sits and mounts to the frame. Once I've got that done, I'll check and make sure that the bearings roll smoothly and don't bind and that there's no play in the axle. Then I'll take some special flat wrenches and tighten everything up so we can put that sprocket on. When you're done, the wheel should spin freely without the bearings binding up at all or having too much slop. Well, it's only been a few minutes for you, but it's four hours later and I'm finally getting to screw on the sprocket to the hub. Have you noticed that's dark outside now? And we don't need to tighten it down because you'll do that every time you push down on the pedals. Well, one side of that locking mechanism had the lever that you tighten down along with a spring. And on the other side, you'll put a spring and then it's got a nut that you can turn and tighten by hand. And now that this rear wheel is completely reassembled, we can put it back on the bike. We'll pull the derailleur out of the way, fish it up in between the brake calipers and make sure it rides into the notch on the frame. Well, once you have it in that notch, you can go ahead and line it up and clamp down on that locking lever. Well, now I have moved on to the brake cable and all I have to do is get it reattached into its proper place. Well, I will give this a quick test and make sure that the derailleur can move the chain through all the different chain rings on the sprocket. Well, I don't think I actually mentioned it, but there were two reasons why I changed the sprocket on this rear wheel. The first one was that it didn't function very well. There was sand and grit in it, and it just, it was crunchy. It was time to be replaced. And the other reason why is because I have adapted this bike with an electric motor. And when I did that, the chain did not want to go around that last sprocket that was so large. I needed something that was smaller. Well, Rascal, our puppy dog, wasn't in the frame very often, but she kept me company all day long while I worked on this project. Well, what should have taken just a few minutes took a few hours. Thank goodness I had a grinder. Well, this is what's left of that sprocket, and it really was hard to get off of that wheel. But it is done, it is adjusted, I can't wait to use it, and now I should be able to change gears without the derailleur bogging down in that lowest gear. Well, if you ride bikes and you do your own maintenance, I hope this was helpful. I'm not sure if it helped me, but I hope it helps you. Well, like, subscribe, check out my playlist, and I'll see you in another video.